Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in the D programming language series. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about malloc. Yeah, that's right, malloc, the thing from the C programming language for those of you who used it. Because if you didn't know, in D you can manage your own memory. So if you don't want to use the garbage collector, there are ways to opt out of it completely. There's data structures in the standard library that don't garbage collect. There are standard library functions that don't garbage collect. And then of course you can always use the C library and C functions. And it just happens that a lot of the C library is actually ready and available in the D programming language. So if you're migrating from C into the D programming language, this is a great lesson for you. And if you just want to learn about how some of this memory allocation stuff works and some of the pitfalls and errors that you run into, well, that's the point of this video. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive in here. And today I'm going to go ahead and take you to documentation and the library reference today. So what I'll have you do is go down to core on the left side of the screen here, and you can go ahead and scroll down to standard C. I'll try my best. I'll highlight over it here. And then if you scroll down a little bit more here, you'll find the standard lib here. And again, if you're coming from C programming, this will be very familiar. In fact, all these header files <laughs> will be very familiar to you because they are C header files that they're uh, based on or called into. Uh, that's what the decode's doing. And you'll find malloc here as well as free. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at malloc here. And then uh, I'll just go ahead and keep this open uh, for a little bit here. Let's just go ahead and search for it. So you can see the function signature. Now we haven't, we've talked about, I should say, one attribute on functions at safe. We haven't talked about no GC, but this is again, a way of avoiding garbage collection. That's explicitly marking this function that it will not uh, garbage collect. Um, and then again, we can't use some of the functions uh, or data types built in that might garbage collect. So what we really care about though in this particular lesson is this malloc function and the associated free. And of course you get your calloc, realloc, um, and so on uh, functions. But let's just look at malloc for now. So again, if we wanna pull in the malloc function, if I scroll up here, we need to import this library here. So import core.standard C library and the standard lib here. Okay, so again, you'll notice that it's different than the D language standard library. First time we're doing this in this series, but again, I just wanna show you uh, how this works here because you might want to manually manage your memory. Again, maybe that's for your own performance concerns or whatever, um, or you just wanna sort of opt out of the um, garbage collection in the language, but use other features of D. In fact, we've still got to talk about uh, safety and better C and some of these other things that are part of the deep programming language. But uh, anyways, let's go ahead and show you how to use malloc. So the idea here uh, and what I'm going to go ahead and do just to illustrate is that we want to allocate some memory. So I'm just going to use a pointer and I want to grab a chunk of memory here. Okay, so this pointer here is just going to grab, let's say, five integers. And this is, well, each integer is four bytes, so 20 bytes of information, okay? So let me just annotate that, four bytes per integer, okay? So again, that'll be quite familiar to you if you're coming from a C background, but let's go ahead and see it in the D programming language. So int memory equals malloc int, and then we've got some of the properties. Um, that we should be sort of familiar with in D of a variable size of times, well, I want five of these, so 20 bytes here. So allocate 20 bytes, uh, five integers uh, of data, okay? So let's go ahead and, I mean, let's just start with this. Let's see what we get um, from this particular run here. So I'll go ahead and just use RDMD to run this and well, immediately I get this error message here, okay? So it's saying cannot implicitly convert expression malloc of 20 and LU is basically a long unsigned byte, so a, a positive number that could be large, that's how much memory we can allocate, uh, of type void star to int star. Okay, so first and foremost, uh, if you're new to programming or maybe a refresher and see the malloc function, the return type is void star. Okay, now when we've been talking about pointers so far in this series, uh, so when I have a pointer to a chunk of memory, when I've said int star here, that means to a collection of ints. But malloc's a general purpose function. It doesn't know if it's giving us integers or longs, unsigned or objects of different uh, sizes or whatever. It just knows that it's giving us some amount of bytes. But D is type checking in the sense that it wants what's on the left side to match the right side. 
Okay, so for a special purpose function like malloc, we want to use something like, uh, for instance, uh, cast, and then that this is going to be integer pointers, okay, or, or a pointer to an integer, or otherwise we are working with uh, five integers that are four bytes, okay, because that's how we're going to access the memory, because we're saying this is a pointer to integers, okay, so that's the idea, let's go ahead and run it, and we can see it works. Now, in general, maybe this is my uh, C habits coming, but, you know, let's try something like this, auto memory, you could do that, that's fine, um, you could even, uh, let's see what happens if we get rid of this cast here, um, and actually, just to, uh, you know, debug a little bit from some of the things that we can use in D. Let's say memory uh, type ID. Let's go ahead and just print that out here. Oops, I forgot to uh, type ID. And let's put it in memory here. There we are. Uh, again, it is smart enough to figure out that this is int pointer. I would, you know, work with malloc, probably prefer that you're, you know, um, not using auto in this case. So let me go ahead and just show this here uh, because otherwise, you know, <laughs> you do get uh, void star here and you're kind of losing some of that type safety. So uh, just a little note there uh, for this uh, lesson here, because we're talking about some things related to safety. Uh, I would recommend just, you know, if you know the type, use the type <laughs> kind of deal. Um, most cases you can get away with auto and auto is quite nice, but um, anyway. Um, okay, so we've allocated our memory, but what's the problem here? Well, it's a bit subtle uh, in what's actually going on, but what if we were doing this in a loop? Again, let's make the stakes a little bit higher here. So let's do for each I, um, and let's just do it in, you know, one, two, three, four, something like this. And we'll go ahead and, um, yeah, we could go ahead and print out what the memory type is. Um, but the idea here, if I uh, show this to you on one line, is well, our scope is this curly braces, so we're allocating memory, not really doing anything with it other than printing out its type, and then, well, when we leave this curly brace, we're going to run again, and, well, what happened to that memory? Well, we lose this sort of pointer that was pointing to some other chunk of memory here, you know, five integers, and then we run again, and we get another five, you know, over and over and over again for however many times this, you know, loop runs here, four times in this case. Um, so every time we're losing you know, our memory in effect. I mean, the memory is still there, but we're losing our pointer to that memory, okay? Uh, so that's the idea. Uh, this is what's known as a uh, memory leak here. And uh, just to go ahead and show you, again, it, this program's gonna run and probably fine, but again, you can imagine a program that runs infinitely like a game um, or a server or some sort of application, then you're going to, again, uh, effectively run out of memory on your uh, system here. Uh, and I can show you that that's not really the point of this lesson, but you can use a tool like Valgren. And if you run on this uh, program, oops, we've got to actually compile it. Let's not forget how to do that. Uh, let's just call this uh, prog here. And if we want Valgren, which is a Linux based tool, and there's other memory checking tools you could do, you can see that we did lose definitely 80 bytes here, meaning that we were allocating, well, 20 uh, bytes here every time in this loop. We run this loop four times, that's 80 bytes of information lost. Okay, so that's the idea here. Um, and there might be some other D language things here, but um, what we must do here is free our memory. Okay, when we are done with it, um, so let's go ahead and recompile this. We'll run it just to go ahead and show you that it works fine. And then we can use a tool like Valgrain here to actually check that we you know, haven't lost uh, memory here. Now, there might be other things going on with the allocations here, maybe of these uh, integers and so on, um, that we would have to... Uh, Valgren's really instrumented for C and C++ code, not D, but, you know, the important part for the purpose of this demo is to show that, you know, we definitely didn't lose <laughs> that 80 bytes that we were losing before, okay? So it's a little bit of a digression, but showing the idea of a memory leak. So what does that mean? Well, malloc and free generally use, you know, in pairs, okay? And I say generally because there could be cases where you realloc or, or things like this, but uh, generally every time that you malloc, if you're just starting off programming, right, you will free that memory uh, before it leaves scope, okay? Or whenever you need to reclaim that memory. Otherwise, you get something known as a memory leak, okay? 
even if it's a small memory leak, if it's something in a big loop like this that's running forever, even if it's just one byte at a time, that's enough to slow down your system. Okay, so anyway, that's the idea with using uh, malloc in C um, and calling the malloc function from the D programming language. Now, some other things that we have to be aware of. So let's just go ahead and call this sort of uh, point one here. Memory leaks can occur if we forget to free. Okay, because again, when we're using uh, malloc, we're effectively uh, for the scope of this code uh, using no GC. Okay. Um, now, I don't think this actually uh, compiles here. This is a function attribute. Let me just check here. Uh, that would be kind of neat. Um, yeah, we can't just uh, put the attribute here, but that's the idea here. Okay. And you can mark functions as no GC if you're going to always allocate things. Again, I'll talk about that in a later lesson uh, and why you might want to do that. But let's go ahead and talk a little bit about uh, segmentation faults, because this is something else that you'll uh, run into. Uh, and we've already talked about this in a previous lesson here. But let's go ahead and talk about it in the context of creating a pointer and if it's null, for instance. Okay, meaning that we did not call malloc or in the instance of uh, when using D, if we created a class, we did not allocate it. Again, you can watch the previous video in this series if you missed it. And let's just go ahead and see if we try to dereference something that is null and assign it some value. Okay, so again, let's just compile it. Let's see if it works. Works fine. If I try to run it, we will get a segmentation fault and it is at this uh, exact point here. Okay. So there's a few things you can do if you're working with pointers. You could check here, for example, if memory and you could kind of type it out is null, then, uh, you know, don't do anything with it. Else, you know, this operation is safe here. Okay. So let's go ahead and see uh, if we recompile this and rerun now. Now that we've done this check here, uh, we are OK. And this is something that you are going to on occasion have to do even in the deep programming language, right? If you're creating uh, objects and so on, uh, or if you do go into uh, manually allocating your memory. OK, because again, if something's null or hasn't been allocated, that's effectively a zero address. And well, if we're trying to dereference whatever memory is at zero, you know, we don't own that memory. So that's why we get the segmentation fault that says we're sort of out of bounds here. OK, so that's bullet point number two, segmentation fault. And I'll put specifically uh, D referencing null pointer. If you're coming from Java, the little job that I've done, right, you get null pointer dereference <laughs> the exceptions thrown in these types of things here. OK, so let's go ahead and uh, annotate this as well. Uh, dereferencing a null pointer. Okay. Uh, now, what other issues can we run into? Uh, this will be sort of issue number three here. Uh, what if we free the memory twice here uh, on accident? Because, you know, again, you were watching this video and saying, well, Mike, I got to be, you know, extra careful here. <laughs> um, and you sort of uh, double free here. Okay. Now, depending on your system, this will complain in a segmentation fault. Let's go ahead and see what happens uh, on my Linux system here when I run it. Uh, in this case, I do get a double free error here. Okay, so just something to keep in mind here. Uh, so uh, double free error. How do you prevent that? Well, you could just again do the same little trick. If memory uh, is not uh, free effectively, it is not null. Uh, let's go ahead and see uh, how we do this, right? We don't have not here. So you can write this uh, in a couple different ways here. Um, let's go ahead and, uh, oh, I guess let me just do it here. Uh, if memory uh, is not equal to null, there we go. <laughs> That's probably the cleanest way to, to do it here. Uh, then I can compile it and run um, and then make sure to not free it. Now let's see what happened here. This was kind of interesting here. Um, it looks like it's still crashed here. Double free. Okay, so a couple of things to try here. Uh, one, let me make sure I saved here. Um, run it, looks okay. And I'm still getting the error here. Okay, so what's the kind of common thing here? We might want to actually look um, on our system. The, the common thing that folks often will do when they free, um, sometimes to be safe, is just 
set to null the memory, which again is saying a pointer that's not pointing to anything right now. Okay, so if I run this now, uh, runs fine here. Okay, so it looks like the you know implementation free here is not uh, setting my memory to null. Again, depending on languages that you might be used to, for example, when you delete memory, it might also set that pointer to null. In this case, it didn't. So, you know, you might do this check or this manual uh, setting to null here. Again, if you're just diving into the manual memory allocation. All right, now those are a few things to be aware of. Now, at this point, you might be watching this and you're saying, well, Mike, we're using the D programming language. That's what we're excited about. And it sounds like we're just introducing more errors here, more things that can cause problems. So how can we prevent this? Well, remember what we've learned in a previous lesson. If you haven't, um, I'll go ahead and just introduce again. You can annotate functions with at safe, which is going to take care of a lot of the common memory bugs that you're going to run into. Okay. And the idea here is if I even try to compile this program, now you're going to see I get a bunch of you know, error messages here. And let's try to take a look at these here because I think it's important just to understand what's going on. But it's saying at safe function D main. So I've marked my main function here. We can't call an at system function free here. Okay. Um, so that's kind of interesting here that we can't, if I have a function that's safe here, and this is transitive, meaning if main calls a function, all the functions that main needs to call are safe. And I'll talk about this in a uh, upcoming lesson here. Um, so it's basically saying, well, and let's go ahead and, and take a look at these. Um, you know, these malloc functions here are system level functions, functions where we're sort of allowing, um, again, you can see the annotation here, uh, manual memory allocation or, you know, things like uh, pointer arithmetic might be going on in some of these other functions. And, and in some cases, that's fine or legal, and we need to be able to do that here. Okay. Uh, but I'll leave that as a little bit of a teaser here. You know, again, AdSafe is not going to let you uh, call some of these functions to do this manual work. Now, there is, of course, a way to do this because, again, you know, there's a reason that we have these memory management uh, functions available to us in D. But in the default case, we might want to be safe or try to be as safe as possible. All right, folks, so with that said, I'll leave that there, a little bit of a cliffhanger to uh, keep you excited about the next upcoming lesson. As always, and I'm starting to uh, advertise a little bit more, these lessons are on the Courses MSHA.io page if you just want to be able to watch them sequentially in one go, so check that out. And as always, folks, thanks for your time and attention. I'll look forward to your comments in the discussion, and we'll see you in that next lesson very, very soon.